Hello everybody, Mr. Sticksman here, and welcome back to Career Mode in Stormworks. Now, in the last few episodes of this series, we've been trying to deliver containers across the map and earn money for it. We've made a truck, we made some trailers, and you know, I, I think we did a pretty good job. But we had to sadly conduct a rescue mission on our truck um, because it flipped over in the mountains, or at least I flipped over in the mountains, I crashed it, and uh, it, we ended up losing the containers as well. Somebody nicked them when, uh, when we went to get our equipment uh, to save that thing. So yeah, we're <laughs> we are a bit down on our luck at the moment, but that is going to change in this episode because we are beginning a brand new project. I'm very excited about this. It's something I've never done before, but it's going to make delivering containers and a lot of other jobs as well, much easier and faster. We are going to build a quadcopter. Let's go. Now, at the moment, we don't own a hangar, and we can still build one of these quadcopters right now, but we don't have an ideal location for it just yet. I am going to work towards actually buying a hangar, um, and from there it'd be much better, but we're going to have to build this thing over here, um, just in the water, okay, in the dock, because uh, it's the biggest build area that we own, and this thing is going to be kind of fairly large, okay, it's not going to be huge, but it's going to be pretty large, and it will not fit inside the train shed, that would be a complete disaster trying to build it in there. So, yep, we're going to have to build it in the water, and either float it, or put it on stands, just while uh, we're saving up for a hangar and then we can modify it to a proper freestanding quadcopter. But as you can see, it's tipping with rain right now. That doesn't matter too much. I mean, I am actually planning by the end of this episode in getting the quadcopter up and running in some kind of basic way. It won't be finished, but it will be hopefully working at least at the end of this video. So I'm very, very excited about that. Um, so yeah, let's go over into the workbench just over here and and get started right then i've got an idea of what i want to achieve with this build and it's going to have of course four propellers as as you'd expect on a quadcopter eventually it might even have eight but i'll explain that you know later if we ever need to use that many um but each propeller is going to have one medium electric motor that should be plenty of power and then in the center in the core of this quadcopter i'm going to have two large diesel engines kind of lying flat opposite each other uh, with a large battery in between them as well as a, a kind of like a generator setup but I do want this build to be quite um almost minimalistic actually quite skeletal in its design and look so it's going to look quite unique I think and I'm hoping for it to look a bit like one of those remote control drones except I am actually going to be on it and riding it as we fly of course now this version that we're going to build first is going to be capable of transporting containers at least one okay and ideally we might be able to daisy chain a couple of containers um, as well if it's going to be strong enough which i think it will be um, but we'll take one step at a time and see how we get on now first of all what i'm going to actually do is build the engines because that is one of the main features that i'm kind of visualizing in my mind right now so if we just get a platform going here most of this platform will not remain um, you know eventually we're just using this to build on at the moment then we're going to get a large battery which is just here uh, and just you know put it right in the middle like that okay so that is literally going to be the center of this vehicle and also hopefully the center of mass as well is going to be right in the middle of this battery because these are heavy I mean that weighs 800 um, and they also cost ten thousand dollars so i only want to use one of them um, ideally at the moment but next we're going to get the engines so we're going to use large diesel engines here and i'm just going to put them like this that seems to be pretty good uh yeah that's correct so this is the front here and i'm going to have generators here to generate our electricity of course so they're going to be sticking out the front uh, just for an example actually i might as well do that now and I'll probably use a gearbox for them, but I think it'd be quite cool to have them like this, right? Because my seat is going to go kind of in this position and it's going to have these two generators either side of it. So I think that might look quite good. A bit more like a, a spaceship or something like that. <laughs> anyway, let's just get rid of some of this platform now because we won't need it. Uh, 
Okay, now here we're actually going to sort of close up the battery inside. So I am going to just bring that across. Okay, now as I said, I want this build to be a bit skeletal. And by that I mean I want to be able to see the inner workings of this as well. So I don't want to completely cover up that battery. I just want to have some kind of structure around it as if it's holding it in place, right? I am actually going to bring those engines in just a little bit. Like this. And from here, if I just cover up this part as well, and up here I'm going to make some kind of rib cage at the top. So, for example, we'll just grab this. And therefore, when we've done it, we should be able to see the battery through at the end. That's it, that's it. Good. Very nice. Okay. So this is our main engine block now, and it's going to sit kind of on top. This is the upper, the upper side of this quadcopter here. We will have to just adjust this because I've moved the engines in, so we'll just do that quickly. Now I guess we can like replicate the top here but underneath as well and I'll just make sure I've done that. There we go. So yeah, I might as well do the same underneath as well, which means all we have to do is get rid of these like that. Now that is actually the battery there so we can't delete any further because that is literally the battery. So we'll leave that in like that. And then also I'm, I'm thinking about going for a, a red and white build here as well. So if I just get the red and we'll just start painting stuff just to see how it looks. I might even do a red support bar across the center as well, just a bit like that really. Yeah, that's good. Okay, nice. I think that looks pretty good so far. And also, of course, these generators, as I say, they're gonna move because we're gonna have a gearbox on them, but I'll try and kind of incorporate the gearbox into, uh, into the walls somewhere so that we don't quite see them as much. And as I normally do, I'm going to think about the key features of this build right now, actually, because we're nice and early on. And I don't want to sort of build around my key features later because they're really important. I need to get them in. So um, I'm going to go back to white here. Let's try and make some arms now for our propellers as well. And we'll just come out, I don't know, just uh, a number of blocks here. Let's see. Let's try seven for now. There we go. And I'll do it on the other end as well. So they'll both be exactly the same. In fact, what I could do is just copy and paste when I've done one end to mimic the other because this is right in the center and that's going to save a lot of time. So I'll do that. Um, but yeah, I'm imagining our seat is going to be in between these two generators here, just, you know, in that kind of area. So that's why I'm thinking if we bring these uh, arms out low down, we can have the seat on it. Um, and then it's going to sort of bend up and curve round and give us our propellers um, nice and wide on this thing as well. So let's go up a bit and we're going to use the 2x1 wedges for that. Okay, that's pretty good. And from here I'd like to go out a bit, a bit like an A-frame I suppose we might be making here. Um, I'm going to go out either side because now we're, we're curving round um, towards each of the propellers. Um, and of course they need to be quite wide because actually if we just have a look at this because I'm not sure how wide they'll need to be um, But let's use some heavy rotors. I think for this build we're gonna have four of those and Yeah, of course that's way too close. So they're gonna have to be sort of out in this area, aren't they? Um, so we'll come out four here and then I think we're gonna have to extend this out using uh, the fours because it's gonna just go a bit further like that and a bit more of a gradual um, bend upwards so to do that what I'm what I'm going to do here is give us a wedge on the end it's one by one okay and then we can go up from there I think now that is pretty good actually it will probably look quite thin won't it when this is all done so I've got the idea to actually kind of double up on the thickness of these bars here maybe not down here but certainly up here where they're holding up those big motors um, and propellers as well so we'll probably kind of thicken this out at some point but if we just try and get the, these propellers and motors kind of installed now and then we can work around that I reckon okay so if this is going to be doubled up what I'm probably going to want to do is have a base here and then put the motor on that actually so we'll choose now medium motors I'm assuming these are going to be enough um the large ones we could use the large ones um how much do they cost because I can't remember twelve thousand dollars each and they're going to drain a lot of battery so yeah now I'm thinking because of the battery drainage alone that's why I'm going for medium uh motors here but yeah also the price as you can see that would be 
$48,000 just on the electric motors if we went for these big ones. Plus they do weigh quite a lot as well and we want to keep this thing as light as possible actually. So yeah, let's use the, the medium ones here. Two grand each, that's perfect, right? That's perfect. Um, and then we'll just put the propeller straight on top, I think, for now. So we'll take the heavy rotor here, chuck it right on top, and there we go. There are the first two. I'm quite happy with that shape. I think that's, yeah, I think that's quite good. I mean, we are going to sort of reinforce this or probably make it... Um, a bit thicker as I say, but also I'll put some support bars across here. You know, it'll, it'll look much better as we develop it, I think. But let's try and actually include a kind of cage, a rib cage, around these motors, a bit like we've got here, uh, where the engines and the battery are as well. So I'm just thinking maybe we'll get, uh, hang on a minute, <laughs> we'll get a wedge here and just build it up like this. Yes, yeah, something like that, and then we'll just take that the same on all of the sides. Okay, there we go. How is that? Oh, um, what about this side? Oh, yeah, because we're doubling it up. It'd probably be all right, actually. Let's do that now. Let's double it up now. So, I think all we're going to have to do is put extra blocks here, right? Like that, and then just go down from there. Let's try and see. Yeah, that's better, isn't it? Look at that. Much better. Much better. And then we're going to curve around, of course. Just to follow the same shape here. I'm going to backtrack a bit because I'd rather have a support bar which goes across here. Um, so let's try that from there. Uh, yeah, and we'll just get rid of some of these as well. So, how about the bar is here in that case? Yeah, let's try that. That's good. Okay. And then I guess we can go down a bit into that. Yeah, very good. And then we'll just replace one of these because I think I want to keep that in the end. Like that. How's that looking? Yeah, that's good. It looks strong, right? It looks like it's actually going to hold up those motors a bit better now. Very cool. We could even put some holes in this um, just to give it the the effect that we are trying to save as much weight as possible. Like that, for example. I'm not sure. I'll leave them in there for now um, and we can always remove them. But they're evenly spaced, aren't they? So that's pretty good. I mean, it will save a bit of weight anyway. Not much, but it will save a bit. Um, and also, it might look a bit more sort of realistic or... Um, or practical at the same time. Okay, if we're happy with that, which I think I am, what I will probably do here is like put a few extra bits and pieces on just to make it look like it's holding in place better. But I think now, and actually we could, we could even run these support bars right through as if they're actually sort of one piece or really, you know, held on with a lot of strength underneath. That's probably quite a good idea. Uh, and I might even colour them or something. We'll just stick with that for now and see what happens. But what we can do right now is actually copy and paste this whole uh, structure here onto the other side and it should be fine. So let's go and do that. And there we go. Look at that. It's pretty big actually, isn't it? <laughs> it's pretty big. But I think that's a good thing. Um, I think probably for balance and performance, it's a good thing to have this nice and wide. Um, and, oh yeah, this is going to be great, isn't it? This is going to be really cool. I, I can't wait to fly this thing. I've never made a quadcopter before. I made a couple of uh, smaller helicopters. Um, so this is all quite new to me, but it should be fairly similar to a helicopter in terms of, you know, controls and stuff like that. So yeah, I, I'm pretty excited. But now, I guess what we could do is try and put a seat on. Um, now, the seat is going to go somewhere around here. We'll get a, a compact pilot seat for the moment and just chuck it there. That's it. And if we just put our camera in this position, so we should have fairly good visibility, actually, you know. We can see all around us. I'm not going to enclose myself. I might even be completely out in the open. Um, but, uh, you know, at the same time, I might have some kind of uh, glass uh, protective screen as well. We'll see how it goes. But uh, at least for now, that is roughly where I want to be sitting. 
Actually, it would fly right now, probably, if we actually took it out. I'll just hook up some of the links here. You could probably take off with it. <laughs> uh, but of course, we do need a gyro um, and we need some, you know, proper control uh, things implemented as well. However, one thing I do want to add right now before we get too carried away is a frame for connecting containers to. All right, because that is the job of this version of the quadcopter here. So if I just bring a line down from the center, like let's go three down for now. Okay, so it's going to be attached directly underneath. I'm not going to use winches or anything. I think I'm going to have more of a fixed uh, frame in place under here. So we can always use it as a stand as well, uh, you know, when this thing's on the ground perhaps. But I'm going to build it three down just for now and we can always raise it or lower it if we need to. My idea for this is a bit of an X shape actually. So again, it will kind of fit in with a skeletal theme, but also I just don't want it to, to be a rectangle, you know, be quite sort of uh, plain in that case and, and expected. But if we make an X out of it, it's probably going to look a bit more unique and it might just tie in better with the overall look of this design. Um, so first of all, I will make it as a rectangle just so that we can get the right dimensions and then I'm going to start adjusting it to, to shape it and make it look better. The containers in this game are currently uh, 29 blocks long and 11 blocks wide and tall as well. So if we just go for 14 blocks either way, so we'll just go 14 this way. Uh, that's too far. There we go. 14 this way and 14 this way, that'll be 28 plus the one in the middle is 29. So that's how long the containers are, okay? And then we're also going to go this way as well. I think five each way. That's it. And then the same on the other side. There we go. And then we just join it up. Brilliant, so that is the shape and size of, uh, of a container uh, currently in the game. Now let's get some connectors. And I'm just gonna use electrical connectors because that is one of the options you can use. So we'll put those on there. The, the containers also have um, rope anchors actually, so you could use ropes if you want to and you know, winches and everything, but I'm just gonna use these for now. So that's the basic shape, but yeah, as you can see, it'd be fine, but it's not a very exciting look compared to, you know, what <laughs> the rest of this thing actually. So let's go and, and find a way of making this into an X. I'm going to get rid of these bits straight away because we just won't need that at all. Um, but I'm thinking we might need a bit of this center line here and I will also... Okay, we'll leave that there for now. Uh, yeah, okay. So let's just bring it in, shall we? I wonder if the fours... No, let's use the twos. Uh, the two the two by one wedge might be the best option here. But that's only a guess. We'll have to see how that works. So bring that in there. That's very good. Okay, and then we'll do the same over here as well. Very nice. And then because it's an X, we can just get rid of this uh, and this as well. But we will leave just the center line in. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? I think. Let's cut that away as well and get rid of these. Nice. Okay. And also, I will actually uh, have two supports here just so it looks a bit stronger. And, and we'll get rid of that one in the center there. So it's not too busy and complex. There we go. That's that's quite good just for now, isn't it, actually? Yeah, look at that. That's very cool. I might make the tips of those red as well. All right, there we go. Very cool. And actually, what's interesting as well here, I've just realized, is that when we're sitting in the seat, we can see where we're going to be connecting up to that container. So... That's very good visibility, isn't it? We can match those up really, really nicely in first person mode. I like it. I, I Honestly, I'm quite enjoying it. It's pretty fun to build this kind of thing. It's pretty fun. Okay, now we are going to need a gyro. Um, that's one of the next really important features to have. And well, I could put it here behind the seat, actually. Um, I was thinking about putting it on the back, but you know what? I could put it back here. If I put it behind the seat, because what I'm thinking is if we put it in here, it's kind of visible, but also out the way, um, and it's not going to get in the way at any point, hopefully, as well. So I'll get the gyro out. I've just thought of an issue here. How do we put it there? Because it's probably not going to attach. As you can see, it won't attach onto the battery. So what I'll do is I'll delete the battery just temporarily. 
and I'll put a bit of a wall or a line up here. Then attach the gyro to that. Like that. Okay, then we can get rid of this and put the battery back in. Uh, and it should be okay. Let's try and put it through those gaps if we can. Will it go in there? Just turn it around. Yes, there we go. Right, the gyro is installed. Fantastic. What colour? I guess I might want it white, actually. But then perhaps we can have some darker bits around the all around the edges in there as if it's shadow make sure that's all done like that nice okay painting is always subject to change of course it's only uh, doing a bit here and there as we go back here it's probably handy to have a bit of a gap isn't it I'm wondering if we could maybe have some supports here that might go down near the seat How's that? They're probably, yeah, they're actually, let's put them wider. Now, I'm not sure if I actually want to stick with that. It looks a bit, I don't know, it just doesn't look quite right to me. However, um, you know, we'll leave it there and it can give us, it can inspire us for future design uh, later on. If we want to get this flying today, um, I wonder if we could perhaps add a, a bit of a throttle you know just a very basic setup here for controlling this vehicle so we just do that and then find ourselves a throttle okay now in a minute we can actually start hooking things up and hopefully get it flying in this video but um, I've noticed that the propellers are not quite set up properly yet as you can see these ones here, well that's correct, it's facing forwards and we've got positive which is going up and to the right. But this one has mirrored so it's not quite correct. So I'm just going to uh, delete this one with symmetry mode off. And also these arrows I think are facing backwards as well so we need to get rid of those. And we'll just reposition all of them with new ones. That one can go there, that is now correct. Okay, and we'll just go over here and change these up as well very very good okay so now that's done we can actually go into logic and just uh, link up some of the nodes uh, and see if we can get it working so go into logic here and w and s for me is going to be pitch uh, no it's not is it yeah wait a minute uh yeah <laughs> it's going to be pitch so we'll go there w and s is pitch and then stabilized pitch uh, comes out of the gyro and just simply goes into the pitch on the propeller um, here. Okay, pitch is done. And uh, what's next? Well, we could have A and D. If we just find A and D, there it is. Uh, that's going to be, let's see, roll. I'm going to have A and D as roll. So we do that and then we'll take stabilized roll out. And again, just go into roll on the propellers. Then we're going to have collective, which is the up and down. Okay, so the up and down is literally what makes us go up and down. But it's called collective on these propellers here. And all it does is it sort of um, it turns the blades from a neutral position where they're completely flat and not going to generate any lift for us. It angles them like you can see here, actually, they're angled. And therefore, it's going to generate lift and put us up into the air. So that's what collective is. And we'll just put that straight into these nodes here. And finally, we need to have a way of controlling yaw, which is going to be our sort of left and right horizontal turning. What we're going to do here then is have a tail rotor or perhaps a double tail rotor, because of course it's going to be fairly big, this thing, and heavy. And also when we're carrying containers, even more heavy. So I think we'll just bring this out of it. If I put symmetry mode on for a second. And then we'll just try and put these tail rotors on here. Yeah, that's the I that's my idea anyway. Um, in terms of design, <laughs> I might improve that a bit. Um, I suppose what we could do, I don't know if it'll fit, we put wedges in here without them catching on the blades. Yeah, that's a bit better, isn't it? Anyway, we can do that in the future. Um, but let's, yeah, let's stick with that for the moment. When I've set these up before on other vehicles, um, actually, I couldn't find a way of having this propeller 
um, working with the other propeller. They're kind of, as you can see, the positives are going in different directions here. We really want those arrows going in the same direction, same underneath as well, but I couldn't find a way of doing it. I don't know why. Um, let me know if that is possible. But what you can do is actually put a function block here. So I'm just going to do that for now. And we'll get a function with one input there. And we'll just reverse the tail rotor. Now, I think the one we're going to want to reverse is actually this one right here. We'll find out <laughs> when I've tested it. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll stick with that. I'll also put these to five blades, I reckon. There we go. So five bladed tail propellers. Um, they're going to start in the neutral position because we only want them to be... Because they're going to spin all the time, I think, aren't they? It's just that we want the blades to angle. Uh, when we want to actually turn, but otherwise we want them nice and straight and neutral. And I will probably end up hiding this function block, you know, at some point. Um, we'll leave it there for now so we can see it and it's easy to uh, modify if we need to. So we'll go into here and do x uh, times negative 1. Okay? And that should just reverse that rotor. Also, they are going to need electric motors. So I'm going to just take two of those. Where are they? Oh, there it is. Small electric motor. One for each rotor, and then we'll just uh, sort of link them into the main throttle as well. So they'll just sort of scale up with these main propellers, at least for now. That should be okay. Here's our throttle then, and that's going to go straight into these motors for now, as well as the big motors at the same time. I'll also probably make these five bladed, I think, just because it's probably going to give us a bit more grip on the air. That's it, five blades. Very, very cool. Okay, now we're going to actually hook up these as well to the gyro. I'm going to use left and right arrows for this, so we'll do that. Left and right arrows, I'm going to go into yaw and then stabilize the yaw. We'll just go into these uh, tail rotors here, in this case, the function block first. Next, we have to actually do the collective because I forgot I've done the collective on the propellers here or the rotors, but I haven't connected them up uh, into the gyro. So we're going to put up and down, which is collective, into the gyro and then that's going out here to the four propellers. Um, and finally, I'm going to have number one at the moment hooked into the, uh, the auto hover feature as well, just so that we can do that uh, with a simple button press for now. I'm also going to label it here in the seat just so that we know and it's going to be on toggle so it can stay on uh, for most of the time probably just a, it's a bit safer if we fly with that on. Okay so let's spawn it in then but of course we're going to have to float it at the moment because we, we, we don't have any way I mean I could make a stand for it but I think floats might be a better option for now because they're super light and very easy to do so um, if I just bring the sides out here and I'm going to make a big square box around it, essentially. Make it really, really wide. And we'll just chuck a ton of uh, floats on it. Okay, there we go. And then, yeah, we'll just get some floats here. Now, of course, these things will not stay on the drone. It's just so that we can have a look at it. And then I might devise a better way of uh, spawning in to use initially so we can use it to make money um, and then buy a hanger and get rid of this uh, atrocious <laughs> float set up here. Right, here we go then, our platform. <laughs> Let's see, we could even use this as a base, I suppose, when we actually spawn it in to use it. This might even work. Um, we'll, we'll see, we can always add more floats, of course. Here we go. Oh, look at that, it's easy. Easily holding it up, nice and stable. Wow, okay, that's pretty cool. I like it. I do like it. Now, actually, we do need to hook in the electrics as well, so I'll go and do that quickly. Um, and then, of course, we can try and, well, <laughs> I don't know if we'll be able to take off of these floats. They're actually very light. They only weigh, like, one each, which is amazingly light. So far lighter than one container, actually, even though they're really big. Um, let's take it in and do the electrics. One battery, and I'm just going to send it literally into everything. Now, of course, we're not firing up the engines today, but the motors will still work with the battery. So we'll hook up the uh, the engines in the next video. But I really want to get a good idea of, like, first of all, is it going to work? <laughs> is it going to actually work? And then we can go from there. Just before this is going to work, we have to put these into neutral. Okay, so all of these blades are now going to be neutral. And 
In that case, we can fire up all of the motors and it's not going to go anywhere and they'll just be able to spin up nicely before we actually apply any collective. So that's probably going to be a much better idea. I'm not sure why the blades are still angled because they do have power, don't they? But maybe they, maybe they will flatten out when we start it up. We'll have to see. Start off with a bit of throttle. Okay, this one over here started up a bit slower, but now it's caught up the rest. Very good. Right, let's use our collective, the up arrow. Right, it's working. Yes. Oh, yes. Look at that. Right, let's try pitch now. So, W is going to tilt us forwards. Very good. S is going to tilt us backwards. Very good. And I'll just put the stabilizer on actually which is number one there we go so it's stabilizing us now up a little bit higher just so that we don't hit into anything and blow it up there we go now we're going to try roll so a and d so press a yep we're going to go right and we'll try d to go left very very nice now let's try your because that's going to be what these rotors back here are controlling so I'm holding the right arrow. Perfect. We're going right. Yeah, perfect. And left as well. Okay. So it's not a super agile, but of course that's partly because we've got so many floats on here. It's going to <laughs> make it a bit slower to operate anyway. But there's no problem with it. It's doing exactly what I want it to do. With plenty of control. And, I mean, we're still flying, right? I'm not even charging the battery. It is draining. And eventually we won't be able to fly anymore, but we're not even generating power with the diesel engines yet. And we're only using just over half throttle here. Okay, I've just respawned the quadcopter in. I want to see how much or how little throttle we can use and take off with. Just out of interest here. Bearing in mind that we're not carrying a container at the moment, which weighs about 2,500. But let's just put this to, say, 10%. Uh, oh, okay, 12%, whatever. 12%. Let's try and take off like this. It works. Okay, so 12% power, you can fly about with that. Put the stabilizer on. Go for a quick spin, shall we? <laughs> so what I'm thinking is, when we're not carrying a container, we can use a bit less power in the motors and therefore save a lot more electricity and fuel as a result, diesel. But when we're carrying the containers, we can just increase the diesel engine throttle. I'm actually falling down now. We're, yeah, we're losing battery. And also if I just charge that up to full, we can probably take off again, but then we're gonna soon fall back down as the battery drains. Let's see if we can land in the water. Nice. <laughs> This is good. This is what I wanted to achieve by the end of this video. And we've landed. Very, very good. Let's turn off the roses there. I mean, that is good, right? That is good. <laughs> That's very cool. So I would actually test uh, carrying a container. However, I don't want to pick one up and accidentally break it or, or break this machine, you know, before everything's quite ready. So what I'm going to do is in the next video, we'll hook up the diesel engines, get the generator running properly, um, hook up some more controls and dials and so, we, you know, we can track the data of this thing and make sure it's all running okay. We're also going to, you know, add the fuel back here and the cooling. I'm, I'm planning on doing some water cooling actually on this. So I'm going to make some proper water cooling tanks on the back because I don't think air is going to be sufficient for this. We're going to add gearboxes as well, um, exhausts of course as well and, and things like that. Okay, so this is only going to get better and better from here, but it works. Okay, but that's all we've got time for in today's video guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Career mode is back. 
and uh, I know I know some of you have been asking for that, and I'm very happy to to have it back. And uh, yeah, we're going to make a lot of money with this thing. I know we are, and we're, we're definitely not going to crash it, right? <laughs> we'll have to find out what happens in the future. But thank you so much, guys. Take care, and hopefully see you all very very soon. Bye, everybody. <laughs>